so once again, I am doing the main interview tonight because unfortunately Dylan can't be with us, but he is having way more fun right now at VidCon anyway, so um, yeah, sucks to be us, I guess. <laughs> Just kidding. So I'm super excited to talk, about our, uh, to talk with our guest tonight, so it was almost serendipity that Dylan was not available. He is the CEO and co-founder of Tech Cocktail. He brings over 10 years experience um, from the entrepreneurial field to Las Vegas and the community. Um, he found something very interesting to do on his honeymoon when it all of a sudden started raining, <laughs> which was always a bit of a killjoy. Um, please put your hands together for Frank Gruber. Frank is here tonight because he kind of went above and beyond just all of the stuff that he does every day. He actually wrote a book called Startup Mixology, which is really awesome and it's, it's got a bit of a twist compared to other startup books. So why don't you tell me exactly what Startup Mixology is about? Well, first off, thank you for having me. This is great. I, I just looked back. I was on episode four. Yes, you were. And it's great to be back on episode <laughs> 72. You guys are doing great. So thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I've been busy. I wrote, I wrote a book. This is a, the physical copy, and I, I just got it yesterday. So <laughs> you must be really I'm, Yeah, I've been sleeping with it. It's. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't tell anyone that. Oh, is this live? Is this yeah, live? Yeah, oh, maybe. Okay. We can edit that out. Okay, we can edit that yeah, no. out. Uh, but no, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it took me, like you mentioned, a while to, to, to start up, and I worked at a lot of big companies, and um, this book is really all about, you know, all the different things that go into starting and running a business. So it's literally like every element or ingredient, and using stories from companies like Zappos and Uber and Grubhub and Sweetgreen and, and WordPress and sharing their stories and trying to illustrate a different point about how to, how to do a certain element. So, um, you know, I wanted to be able to try to help people that are trying to, that have an idea. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people come to us and they're like, oh, we really love what you're doing. I have an idea. And I'm like, really? And, you know, I get a lot of the same questions over and over again. Mm -hmm. and, after a while, you know, I try to you know be as helpful as possible. But uh, I was interviewing Jason Fried last w winter, and I was like, "Listen, you know, wh what do you do? You get a lot of people come to you with questions and stuff." And he said, "You know what you should do is like, if someone asks you something more than eight times, you should put put it in a book and sell it." So we did. I really, I really like that advice. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that means yeah. I need to write a book on three D printing or yeah. something. Right, exactly. But I mean, really, to be honest, it's about helping people get get somewhere faster. And a lot of people have ideas, and I want to be able to put this in the hands of any in, uh, entrepreneur that has ideas, somebody who wants to start up, as well as entrepreneurs that are trying to innovate within a big company. I worked mm -hmm. at AOL for a long time and Tribune for a long time, and mm -hmm. working inside that environment, um, it's you know, in some cases, you're you're in a style that's similar to a startup, and trying to innovate and push things out is, is mm -hmm. really hard. Hard. So, Absolutely. so looking for ways to kind of help in that that direction too. Awesome. So you could almost call it like a recipe book. For it is, yeah, it is. It is a recipe right? book for trying to you know start and run a business successfully. And uh, I guess the interesting thing is it doesn't have um, physical you know hey put this this ingredient or whatever. It's yeah, more what broad. Yeah, what makes your but, book different? Yeah. So every chapter is um, you know lead story about a company that in, in kind of illustrating you know how to get funding or how to be bootstrap or how to come up with ideas or how to market or whatever. And then it talks about the harsh realities of that that ingredient. So whether you know there's a lot of people who've done this and they've you know they've run into things. And it, I think part of the book is that you know, the differentiator in the book is that you know you hear a lot about the companies that have been out there for nine or ten years and you really only hear about the success at the end. So right. like the IPO right. or this exit Absolutely. or whatever and then they're humongous and the first seven to eight or maybe first five or whatever are really hard and you don't necessarily hear about that and I think it's important if you're going to start up or run a business it, that you understand that component of it that it's not going to be just sunshine, sunshine, rainbows and unicorns the whole time <laughs> and there, it will be hard and I think um, in general um, it's been glamorized and so I want to make sure that mm. people realize that in each element this is what you can do to kind of these are going to things you might run into and then how do you get out of that you know how, so this interesting thing is that so we talk about the harsh realities and then we talk about celebration as an opportunity to motivate and propel you kind of out of those those situations so I know that sounds really weird because you're probably thinking like celebration like yeah cause what does I that find, mean <laughs> I find in the startup industry yeah. people People are kind of obsessed with failure right now and the things right. that can teach you and the way that yeah. it can make you more successful. But you actually believe the opposite. Well, you don't. You, you obviously value that, but yeah. you also think that there's something in celebrating their successes, right? Yeah. Well, it, it's actually talking about you know celebration as a motivational tool. So mm -hmm. using it to propel you out of those those lows because you're going to be up and down, and it could be up and down the same day. You know, you don't know. Every day is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But um, you want you want to get out of that valley. And you, how do you get out of that? You need to create these mo momentum events that help you push through. So it's anything 
as simple as like, you know, a sales bell if you're out trying to sell more stuff because that's going to motivate your team and want anybody's right. going to want to bring yeah. that bell. Yeah, that's fine. To, 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 you know, more, um, I guess, uh, we took, a, you know, at the end of our first year bootstrap or, you know, bootstrapping uh, and doing this full time, we took a workcation. It was kind of like a celebration of, oh my gosh, we survived. You know, like we <laughs> yeah, did it. That's really important. And, but I mean, we still that. worked, you know, mm -hmm. we worked the whole time, but the idea of actually doing that somewhere that was beautiful and you could actually be on your own, you know, have the flexibility and the freedom to do this is, um, it was something we were kind of acknowledging. Absolutely, so, yeah. that's really important. Definitely. So there's, I mean, there's a chapter on failure. That's a big part of it. Of there, you know, there's a cha chapter on success too. And you know, I think the reason that the, fail the failure chapter is actually a really good chapter because there there are a lot of people that that don't necessarily have the same risk tolerance for for startups and don't necessarily know that failure is part of that. And right. I think it's important. Yeah. That so they understand. some people might give up thinking that okay, this is the first sign of difficulty. This is obviously failure looming, and right. I need to stop. And well, you're saying like, well, if you, you learn from you it, yeah. To, if you if you learn from it, then it's not it's not a big deal. And then keep going. Right. And like, just find your yeah. Place. Maybe it's not that that company. Maybe it's something else. It, mm -hmm. I talk about some failures I've had. Like in the book, oh, I I, st great. I started a company um, that was actually a social network. And it was basically before Facebook, and it was about connecting college campuses and selling stuff like e-commerce for, for on the college campus. Didn't quite work out yet, but it wasn't because of the idea. The idea was a good idea. It was actually more about the team. So I tell, I tell mm -hmm. the lesson about mm -hmm. how I pulled that team together and you know learned a lot from that. You There's know? some really good yeah. stuff in this book. Oh, thank nice you. Book. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited about it. It's, uh, it comes out July 8th, but you can order it now. Um, if you go to tech.co slash book, you can get it and we'll you know, obviously give you some extra content. This is uh, 60,000 words written here. Wow. And uh, I wrote 100,000, so there's extra chapters. There's like the lost chapters. Yeah, so you, got, you had to kill some stuff. And <laughs> yeah. there was one particular chapter that yeah. I wanted to ask you about. Because, yeah. And it starts with C. Yeah. And you, not that kind of C. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you had to take it out. But it's actually really important and integral to yeah. your tech cocktail and everything, it was, right? It was a tough call. I mean, editing in general was a tough call. Because mm -hmm. like, like, there were so many stories that I wanted to include. And people that I wanted to include and things I want to talk about, but you have to get it down to a certain word count. And one of the chapters that I wanted in there was actually community. Community. Right. right. So I, I feel like we what we do every day with Tech Octo is you know try to better, better tell the stories of different communities and do you know hyper local news coverage and events right, and right. Uh, and bubble the best stuff nationally. And unfortunately, you know, if you're starting a company, the ingredient of community is important, but it's not like oh I'm just it's not ac as actionable. I mean you sh you can do things like this and come out and meet people and be a part of it. Uh, but it's not like, oh, this is the you know the thing that's right. going to make it happen. So we actually integrated all those different lessons into all the different chapters. I saw that you've yeah. managed to sneak in a few like local Las Vegas celebrities, right. and, and yeah. such as Sarah Evans yeah. and a couple of other people. Right? Yeah, so we do call outs. I think part of this is like if you're not in our industry and you're trying to get into you know starting running a business or you know you can pick up this book and you can find out some of the key players in there too that are in the industry and so we do these like what we call sidebars and we talk about companies and and people and and things that you should know about and just to kind of help jump start you so you don't have to go and learn it on your own you're like oh these people are you know i, should, I can learn from these and follow that path and mm -hmm. find out other people and interesting things that are, are happening. So this is super valuable, and I love also that you, because you are Las Vegas, this is Las Vegas contributing back our lessons and knowledge back to the startup community worldwide right. as well, right? So yeah. So there's yeah, you're, you're going to recognize a lot of people in the book. Awesome. You know, like, um, definitely, uh, you know, there's a whole chapter on culture. So obviously Zappos downtown project. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's some you know obviously throughout community. So Vegas Tech Fund and their approach to, to funding is awesome. in the, is in there. Um, and then just people that are had shared their ideas. We actually did a, a call out. On, the, on our site through through social media and everything else to say, hey, if you've got stories that are harsh realities about this chapter or this topic, let us know. And we took in hundreds of them, you know, and then we had to vet through all of them and put them into mm -hmm. the different chapters. And and so there's a lot of people that have shared knowledge and, and have contributed to the book. So. Sounds like very refreshingly frank yeah. advice. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Sorry, I had to it's get It's totally that. frank. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Uh, 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 <laughs> so, um, Enough about the book. What yeah. I want to know is the personal story behind, like, what was it actually like writing a book? Because this is the first book you've written, yeah. right? Yeah, um, yeah, and it, it was a journey even to write the book. I mean, I started talking about writing a book uh, back in 2008. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, it's been going on a while. I mm -hmm. was that, then it was going to be about. I was blogging a lot about Web 2.0 and covering the space, and at the time writing for TechCrunch and a bunch of other places, and uh, decided that you know I actually got connected with Brian Solis, who's okay. actually written now four or five books, but it was, it was his first, it was going to be his first book, and it was going to be my first book, and it was going to be about Web 2.0. Didn't work out, timing was wrong, and we would have launched it, and Web 2.0 would have been over. Probably not a good idea, so no, we didn't do not it. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so we waited. We pivoted, yeah. So we pivoted, and we <laughs> waited, and then, you know, it you know kept thinking about different ideas, and eventually right. this came through, and I mean, I pitched this idea four years ago, and it wasn't the right time, and it wasn't the right 
pitch, and then I obviously they reconnected with me a couple like last summer, last August, and uh, we signed the deal, did it, and then I we did our big conference, which is Celebrate here in Vegas in October. I got married in November, and then I started writing the book, <laughs> and so and it was due in January. So I um I didn't I had to, I had to take a little bit of an extension, but uh, my honeymoon was in there too. Um, there's a lot of stuff that so you happened. You were writing the book on your honeymoon. Right? Let me get this straight. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> It was like secretly, you know, on my phone or whatever. But no, um, there were some rainy days. Actually, in the book, one of the acknowledgments is to is to Kauai. This, we went to Kauai for a honeymoon for a couple of weeks, and uh, there were some rainy days in you know December. I mean, in January and February, it's usually rainy there. But right, right. I was able to use those rainy rainy days to like finish stuff. And yeah, I mean, I'm thankful for that opportunity. It was a beautiful place to be able to share uh, that experience. So this is awesome. There's a, there's a lot of you personally in this book. And there is, yeah. That that's going to come out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it starts with, uh, you know, I wanted to create a groundwork. I mean, I wrote it the first three chapters to begin with. I sent them to Sh Tony Shea, and he said, you need a story. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no story. I mean, it was like, it was very like, do this next, and that's what you do. You know, it was robotic, and I didn't, I didn't like it either. Right, and right. I thought that, and Tony thought that, and well, my other great. readers thought it. And I was yeah. like, you know what? We got to restart, start over. So started telling the story of like how I got where I was, and then shared that, and then ultimately shared a lot of other people's it stories. All organically came yeah, together. Yeah, it all came that. together. Well, yeah. awesome. And, and I didn't do it alone though. I had help. Okay. I, I definitely had the help of. Um, some of my team members, um, Kira Newman actually is a big part of it. She is one of our senior writers. She helped do a lot of research, a lot of behind the scenes stuff mm -hmm. that you know, I actually acknowledge in the book too because I wouldn't have been able to do it without she's her. fetching all the bits and pieces. Well, that just helping me sound like a coherent human being. Um, <laughs> Especially you know. when you're doing the late right. writing. Right, exactly, because I mean, it was a lot of brain dumps. Like right. a lot of like, oh my gosh, that happened like eight years ago. What was that? And then like turning into a better story and um, making it fit in the right place. Awesome. And, and then also just vetting through like all the stuff that I wrote, you know. Well, I definitely think yeah. it was worth all the hard work. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I you. definitely encourage everyone to check out yeah. his book. It's coming yeah. out super soon. He's yes. really excited to have some oh, more copies. Yeah, so it's, it's coming out July 8th. You can actually, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, get it on digital right now. Oh, That's the secret. I do have it on my Kindle. Yeah, so Kindle, I, there, I books everywhere. So awesome. thank you and so much. So please join me in congratulating Frank Gruber. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And I, I have to do one more thing, though. Okay. I have to thank my wife. She helped me, too. She's a big part of Tech Cocktail, Jen Consalvo. She's our COO, and she was on that honeymoon with me that allowed me to write. <laughs> awesome. And I'm alive, so well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right, let's do a drinking song. Okay. Sorry. I forgot to thank my wife before. <laughs> That's problematic. I had to do it. Sorry. I hope that works out. No, it'll be okay. okay. We, can we can make that work. Okay. We're ups and downs, we gather round and sing a drinking song. Toast to those we love.